Hi everyone, David Mala here, and today I'm going to show you how to do pivot tables really fast through ClickSense. So if you look here, I've, I've created a new app <clears throat> called Pivot Test, and this is in ClickSense, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Create, and it's created. Now I'm going to hit Open the app, and give it a few seconds here to pop up here. And what it's going to do is going to pop up this area where I can pull in the data files or from other sources. So I want to do this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my computer. I'm just bringing in a flat file. You could bring it in if you wanted to from any of the other areas or bring it in from the click data mark if you wanted to. But in this case, I'm just going to my uh, computer. And what I'm going to do is go to users, myself, desktop, and then I've got a folder called click. There it is right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Titanic database. So this is from Kaggle. There's a website called Kaggle. And it's a great source for data projects and things to work on and to learn data science. They've got a lot of data sets you can use that are free to use. They're public domain. And uh, this, is, this data set here is the uh, survival uh, rates or the people from the uh, Titanic. So it tells you who, they, who the people were if they survived or not. I'll show you that in just a second here. So if I click on this, we and then we've got the data shows right here. It shows you the, the passengers, their number, the survival rate. Did they survive? Did they not survive? The passenger class, were they class one, top class, or three, the bottom class, or the middle class two? Uh, their name, their sex, their age, uh, how many, if, did they have siblings, did they have parents, uh, tickets, fare, um, you know, things like that, where they embark from. So we've got that data here. I'm just going to add it as is. I'm not going to, it's just one table. I'm not going to make any change to it right now. So I'm going to add it in. And we've got this table right here. Now you'll notice if I had another table, we would have a second uh, circle here because, and we'd be binding the two tables together, have an association or a join here. We don't need that here. So we're going to go straight into loading the data. So we're going to load the data. And you can see here the new sheet's been created. So we're going to go to edit the sheet. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to bring over the pivot table. See it right here on the side. If you're not showing the charts, you might be on field or something. Just click on charts. And then you can bring over the pivot table right here. And what we want to do with the pivot table is you want to have dimensions and measures. So if we pull this up, you can see exactly the same as if I clicked on fields on the side here. And what I want to do is I want to compare uh, passenger class to begin with, and I want those that survived. So let's pick survived. Here's survived. And I don't want just any, I want the summation of who survived, is the sum. So what you can see right here is for these classes, this is the number of people that survived in each class. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up, and we've got fields is on right here. If it's not shown, click on fields. And what I want is not just passenger class, but I also want to have sex. And you see how I've got half of the uh, column or half of the area is blue. We don't want that. If you bring it out like this, it'll create a new report or a new chart. You want the whole area blue. And then by doing that, it gives this choice of to add it, which would add it in here as a dimension, or you can add as a measure. In this case, I want to add it as a dimension over here. So we add sex. And then what I want to do is I want to bring in age. Same thing. So see how I make it all blue? Okay. Drop it right in the middle. It does that. And then add age. So it puts these three over here. And sum is still the measure over here. What's neat about this is I can open up each of these once I go to done. Right. So I click on this. And here I can go and click on these to open up and say, okay, for the passenger class one, we've got males and females. And how many males survive? And I can actually get the breakdown of their age. You know, like at 28, how many survived? At 19, how many survived? At 4, how many survived? And then you can also see blanks. Like there's 5 that there's no data on. They're not 0. They're just nothing. Uh, that just means there was missing data. And that's an opportunity to go through exploratory data analysis to go and maybe modify the data set and use maybe fill in the missing data the, the, like this with the mean, median, mode, or range, or set it to zero or whatever would work best for that scenario. You'd have to test that and see, and see if that changes, or how that changes the, uh, uh, how the data shows and um, how it graphs for that data. So 
anyway, what I'm looking at here is you got the passer class, the uh, sex, and then the age. Now, what's really neat, okay, you can look for this and you're looking for anomalies, but what you can also do with these uh, pivot tables, which is really neat, let's go and close this all out here so you can see it easily. I can go and take one of these and make them a measure, just like sum. So I could actually bring, let's say, something small like uh, passenger class, because there's only three of them, right? So I can bring that over here, and it actually breaks down the survival rates for each passenger class, passenger class one, two, and three, into by sex. And then I can go and take this and break it down by age. And when you do it this way, it actually grays out, or in this case, kind of grays blue, it blues out the area where there's no data. So all these areas here have no data in them. And you can actually possibly look at this and see if there's like areas where there's a bunch of data missing. And from this you can get an insight into, well, if I use the mean, would that be a correct representation of the data? Because there's a lot of them down in this range. Now what you're looking at here is the ages are not in order, right? So this is just to show you quickly how we can go, we can change, we can bring them back and forth. I can use sex instead and have two columns, male or female, broken down. Uh, I can change it age around, have passenger class, I can do it that way. I can do any of these things I want. Now if I go back to edit the sheet, what I really want to do is to make it nice and pretty, I want to uh, first discard the changes. Then what I want to do is go to sorting. Okay. And for each one of these, I want to turn off the auto sort and I want to sort it numerically ascending for the passenger class. Okay. That way it goes one, two, and three, which it already is. For uh, uh, the sex, I want to do the same thing and I want it uh, alphabetically. And then the main character, the one here that's really kind of all over the place, is age. I want to turn that off and I want to do it numerically. Uh, and I want to do it ascending like the others. So that way it's from lowest to highest. You could do it the other way if you wanted to. That's up to you. So now when I do this and I go and click done and I go back here. Now I could have saved it when I moved that uh, any of these over here. I just decided not to. But now when I look at it, I'm going to see it in order. So it's very quick and easy to see. You need to have it in order when you've got a big column like ages. You have to. Uh, otherwise it's just a mess. But you can identify, like here's 5 for, I think that's 24 or 25 right there. Okay, and 4. So you, you can look and try and figure out what the distribution is. And, you know, see if there's a pattern or some insight out of this. And what's neat with these pivot tables is it doesn't just have to be survival rates of the Titanic. It could be any data you want. It could be car sales for your all your salespeople. It could be... Um, products being sold. It could be a grocery store, you know, and different items being sold or a sale. It could be uh, a manufacturer selling uh, technical equipment, you know, and all their salespeople could be listed here and they could list them by division and we could break them down by country, division, you know, like an international sales company. We could have country, div uh, division, region, uh, You could, and then you could have the sales reps. You could have multiple, uh, you know, fields here. And then you could have in here maybe your sales, maybe your uh, commissions, maybe um, product availability, different types of product. You could the, the possibilities are basically limitless with what you could do. This is not an end for all for like data science and stuff. There's still a lot more you would have to do. So a pivot table is a great way to just get a quick little insight in your data and maybe to show up some little blips of anomalies. And it's very quick and easy to do. And then you can go and take one of these and pop it over here and there you go I can now see that there's clear, clearly in the first uh, cat or the first class level that there's a bunch of people that in the uh, younger range that um, do not have any uh, information on um, you know why would that be I don't know and then there's a bunch here in the older age range of three or the third uh, passenger class that don't have any data so, you know, if it was stretched out like more like this one in the middle, a mean or a median or a mode might work better there. These it may not because that may not be a true representation of the data when you go and fill in the uh, data to make it more complete to go and do scoring and do uh, uh, forecasting and, and predictive analytics off of it later on with correlation and, 
maybe some Rattle or R or Python or whatever you're going to be using to do that with. But what's really neat here is you can quickly look at it, you can quickly identify stuff, and look at how fast and easy I was able to pull it up and go back and forth with it. And I can go, what's really neat in ClickSense, I can go here and uh, put multiple levels out. I can bring it back. I could have age only. Now, age is going to give me a long ribbon of uh, data. But again, I can quickly see the areas where there's no data very quickly. I can see zeros very quickly. I can see, you know, what, what am I looking for? And that's in the females. I can open up the males and see the same. You know, is it the same across both? Or it kind of almost is for the most part. And then there's a lot down here in the females uh, that are missing in this age range. Maybe there were none. Yeah, it depends on the data. You have to look at the data and see what it really represents. This is just a quick synopsis, a quick overview. And that's what the purpose of a pivot table is. It's much faster in ClickSense than it, is, than it is in Excel. I mean, maybe somebody has been doing it for a long, long time in Excel can do it close. But this is a lot faster, a lot quicker. And then you can also do things like, uh, you know, snapshots and stuff with it. But it's really neat. And then you can go back and graph it and figure out what you want to do with it. So I hope you found this interesting. And I hope this helps you to help with your exploratory data analysis and other uh, realms of what you would be doing with your data, your visualizations, and trying to help people understand where the data is going, what the insights are, and what you know needs tweaking or more identification or more time looking into. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like down below so I can keep sending you some great uh, videos like this, and I've got a lot more helpful videos on my site. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.